You know, his whole uh, philosophy is, um, uh, you know, a major part of what I do. Um, extension through you, you know, by you. But yeah, it's just a, a culmination of all of these things that make us who we are. But you just got to know how to apply it. Everything's applicable, just how you apply it, you know. And being drug free, you know, that, that was key, you know, that was... That was key, and everybody's their own guinea pig. Like we yep. always were guinea pig stuff, you know. You Everything know? I learned, I learned it myself. You know, it, that's why right now I try and pass it on. Why do you have to make the same mistakes that I made? Right, right. Exactly, my son. A good suit, man. He's ten thousand times the man I am already. He surpassed me already. Now, his daddy did a lot of stuff that he had to do in life. You know what I mean? That he doesn't have to do. I experienced, my father did a whole bunch of crap that I didn't have to experience, but he told me, he dealt with the truth. He told me everything, he was like, I did this so you don't have to do that. Right. You know, this is the uh, consequences of these types of actions. So when you understand, I'm like, yeah, you know, it's unnecessary for me to go down that path. Why would right. I do that? Why do I have to do that to experience this? You know what the outcome is, you know what it's gonna be. That's why I don't understand um, drug use. And that's, to me, low uh, uh, self-esteem when it comes to, a, you know, recreational drug use. When people, right. you know, my father used to tell me that the drugs are the poor man's vacation. Yep. So, you know, you, you, you drink your alcohol, you know, you know, if you're alcoholic, you know, you get home from work, hard days of work, you want to just disappear in your alcohol. Now the pharmaceutical companies with the opiates, you want to disappear, you know, you want to go, go away in your mind and just zone out, you know. And that, to me, instead of dealing with the situation, understanding for what it is, right. whatever the problem is, we all got build problems. We all have social. I mean, for them, it's escapism. It's escaping, but you can escape in other ways. You can escape in the gym. Right. You can escape with the weights. You can escape in a book. You can escape with a walk through the woods. There's always different ways to escape, <clears throat> and then come back and deal with your problems. And when you escape that way, you open up the mind. When you look at the tree grow and you see the birds and you see how nature takes care of their situation and their problems, sometimes there's droughts. You know, the worms, maybe the rain too much and then the worms are out. How they handle their situation, how they prevent themselves from being eaten by birds, you know, and how these birds present, uh, prevent themselves from being captured by cats. You know what I mean? And, don't, you know, you, you observe the world around you, and that's a way to escape, and that's a way to learn and grow. You know what I mean? Yeah. I learned a lot from honeybees and, and bees and bumblebees and how, you know, this how they flow. And the, the common ant, you know what I mean? How they work together as a community. I was just studying them, sit on the porch and watch the ants go about their day-to-day, -day and they work, 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 work all day long for the common goal of the community. You know what I mean? Yep. Uh, you know, they and same with bees, you know, they work for the collective good. And that's you can learn a lot from that as human beings. You know yep. what I mean? Working toward the collective good. So whenever you feel down or upset or mad, understand that that's only for a certain time. You prolong it by doing drugs or escaping in those ways because that problem is always gonna be there. But if you take that walk or if you hit those weights or you go for a bike ride or you read a book, then you escape and you open up the mind and you understand that that's only for a moment. You know, that's going to pass. Everything has a season. There's a season for everything. And if you weather the storm, when you come out at the end, you're like, wow, man, I can't believe I even thought that that was such a crazy problem. Right. It's like stuff I think about when I was a kid I thought was, you know, detrimental or drastic when you're in high school, like you're going through certain things. You know, even kids thinking of suicide. I thought of suicide when I was young. You know what I mean? Like certain things you just think are on you and you like, oh, there's no way to come back from that. Now you reflect back, you laugh at it because you have the wisdom of the life experience. And then when you're a kid, you don't have that. So escape in a book. You know, open up your mind, learn about another, and just think you, about it. Are we going to get a book out of you yet or what? Huh? Are we going to get a book out of you yet? Yeah, we're going to get a book I out of you. with a couple of things. We, we, we got, yeah, we got to lay down because that's, that's your immortality. That's why I decided, you know, to do the podcast and the video. Yeah, I really feel, I mean, like, it, it's documenting some ideas. It's organizing our thought. That's the next step. There's no right or wrong. Mm -hmm. You just be honest and true and real. And that will, uh, that's sustainable through time. You know what I mean? 
and and I, you know, I, I I just look at, you know, this is our immortality. You know what I mean? You know, a thousand years from now, when they're looking back at mankind in their primitive state, they'll look at these videos and be like, look at these. Four. No, they really are primitive. <laughs> Thank you. Let me shut that off and we eat though. Okay. Ellen says. Oh, oh, food coming out your mouth? Yeah. Well, you could either way, it doesn't matter. Another thing I learned when I take oh, that, when I eat that fish, that becomes a part of me. Right. You have to respect it, you know what I mean, for what it is and how it's, what it's becoming you. That's how everything is everything. You know? It all I love time. what you. You're a, lot, you're a lot deeper than a lot, I mean. This guy used to call me Deep Water. I don't know if he was cracking jokes or not. <laughs> no, I'm just telling you, you really are, uh, some of the things we talked about, I mean, really, pretty cool. Sometimes I talk too much. <laughs> yeah. But. Your dad was an interesting man, though. My dad. I really, was, I'd love to meet him. You know, but like when you tell the stories about your dad, I feel the same way. Like, you know, how he like, get the toys for the, they understood what it was truly about. And it's not about them. Nope. It was about the youth. And so I try to extend that. You know, he, uh, you understood that with me. Yeah. And I, you I know, just know. I mean, I just really, Donnie, I mean, I don't have a, a mean bone in my, I really don't. That's what I think. The, I like to be strong because I protect myself. Because I don't have a, I really, I'm not, I hope he's not on anyone or that, but I'm just saying, like, I just don't, I'm, I'm not like some people, are, you know, some people are they're just like that, I'm not, people, I like, I'm, you should see me and my grandchildren, man, make you laugh. My kids laugh at me because, I won't say I'm not a mean, I don't have a mean bone in me, but as, I can be all the way one way. Yep. And all the way the other way. Yep, I believe and that. I condition myself to be able to turn a switch on and off. One thing I, I noticed that you have, you can have very pointed and very sharp, like x ray type questions or statements that like cut to the meat of something. Mm -hmm. Like when you're talking with somebody. You know what I'm saying? Like you like, you really think and analyze something before you say something. And you go boom, you, you throw like a. And it's out there and it really makes a point. You know what I mean? Some people jibber jabber and go around like half hour and say one simple concept. You kind of like, Get straight like, to like point. acupuncture, right? Let me go wash my hands. I did my report too. Yeah, I know you did. You know why I think I enjoy just hammering so much here? Why? There's certain things in life that you don't ever forget. They're like hamburgers, like my father used to make. Um, and it just reminds me so much of that. I know it's that's just me. They just um, the food here is always fresh and it's consistent. <laughs> and the people and are just so nice. Good people. Good people make good food. Yep. <laughs> it really is. So true. You know? But, uh, hey, can I get some more coffee, please? Yeah, me too. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gino. That ceremony I had for uh, the Mesa was really cool the other night, too. Mm -hmm. Really, really nice. Mm -hmm. People from all over come, from all over Jersey. It was really nice. A lot of my buddies, a lot of guys I know, are Masons. Really? In the, in the business world, there's a lot of people with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just so impressed because, like, just everybody there, like, I mean, like, just would help him. Like, I heard him, like, talking about 
what people in the community they're helping. It really, I really, I really love what they do. Like I said, nobody tells anybody else what goes on. Right. One time, um, I was thinking about the community and different groups and organizations within the community right. that give back and help and contribute to the overall, uh, you know, success of that community. But one time, I forget it was what form it was, but people were criticizing, you know, kids in some African, you know, in Africa. And why does the United States, you know, give so much money to, you know, right. one poor third world countries? And uh, Brad Pitt says something that kind of always stuck with me. He said, the kids in those environments, oh yeah, they were talking about how much, why did, you know, Angelina and Joey, just when they were together, give so much to these other countries, why not here in the States? Why not, why are they over there? And he said, the only crime those kids had is that they were born in that country. Yep. I was born in the United States of America. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't choose to be born there. I mean, we, you know, they didn't choose to be born in that environment. That's the only crime, you know what I mean? Or poverty. Right, right, right. And, and you know, so it's like, when you look at it like that, it's like any person's circumstance, especially a child, they didn't choose that. They don't choose their parents. They don't choose where they're born or, or the circumstances that they're in. So, you know, why not? Help if you can help. Now, you might have to cut this part out well, if, if you have, because I'm just going to tell a story that happened yesterday, Right. I had a kid come back to me that um, um, did jail term uh, for um, actually I think like like beating somebody bad a couple of kids right and uh, they came inside the gym and he wants to he wants to go on college and ever since that one incident as a freshman he's actually you know led a, an exemplary life then I had one of my other kids over there tell me I said. Uh, well, how's this kid been to you? He says, for the past year, this kid has mentored me and helped me. And then I said to the kid that was there, I said, you know what? You, because you're ready, you're ready, try to give back for what whatever happened. I'm going to give you a shot, and I'm going to give him a shot in the gym. I'm going to do everything to make this kid successful. Because I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of people out there that are haters, and they want to see you fail. I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you succeed. And that kid, you should have seen him smile and just... You know, because I took him, I'm taking him under my wing, and I'm going to bring him to see you sometime. Yeah. Because, like, uh, I just believe him. I'm going to tell you another story, similar. There's a young guy from this environment, from this neighborhood, this town. Talented athlete. And I remember his little crew on the Pop Warner field. They were a little bit older, and I was coaching a little team, the younger kids. Assistant coaching at the time, it was many years ago, and I remember the head coach of that team. He looked over at that the, 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 the older team, and he's like, "I'm like, yeah, those kids are pretty good. They're doing well." He said, "Yeah, that's going to be the starting backfield for Rawway Prison." And this guy is a up north guy, I guess. You know, he's from Union County, and uh, anybody else would have been like, "Oh man, why are you saying?" That? I said, "Man." <laughs> How are you going to say that? He said, watch, trust me. That's going to be starting back for the Royal Prison. Every one of those kids ended up, you know, locked up or in a bad situation, right? So he wasn't wrong. But in today's society, you know, that would be looked at as like looked down upon. Like, how could you even say that, right? Yep. And he said it so real, right? Okay. Let's fast forward. As these kids got into, you know, high school and... They started going down the wrong path. And I had, you know, I had, you know, I didn't really have too much dealings with that group because I came to town, you know, later, you know. But, you know, they, they knew me and, and they had a respect for me. And, you know, I would try and, you know, aid them and, and, and you know, give them, you know, advice whenever. Uh, so they ran, the, the group of them ran into a real tight situation, right? 
almost a really bad situation. They came out of it, you know, and, you know, they still didn't learn from that situation. Still, you know, dabbling in being knuckleheads, right? right. The one kid came to me when I had the gym over uh, uh, next door, and he says, I want you to teach me how to box. So the kid, you know, he's pretty thorough to fight real well. I want you to teach me how to box. I want to be a boxer. I want to be this. I said, okay, you want to be a boxer? I said, um, I want you to go home. And I want you to research and you look up um, certain fighters. I gave him a list of fighters. I want you to look up their styles. Tell me about their style, how they fought. One was a southpaw. One fought orthodox. One was like him. And I said, I want you to come back and tell me why they fight the way they fight. I want you to um, 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 research this, research that. And then I want you, because, you know, of course, it would be cost. You know, I wasn't going to charge him. Nope. You know, he, he didn't have the money to pay for training. And I said, you, all, that's all you got to do. And I'll train you. Right? Right. Of course, he never did it. Right? I never trained him. I never taught him how to box. He ends up getting locked up and he does a few years. Right? He calls me from prison recently. He's in a halfway house. Yep. And he's like, you know what? You were right about a lot of things that we should talk about. But I learned the hard way, right? And when I had a conversation with him, he seemed like different, you know, he seemed like he matured. But I looked at his little post. He got into fitness, right? right. So he, he said, um, doing his halfway house thing, could he do uh, train, you know? And I said, you know the type of guy I am. You know, if I extend myself to me, you better not ever, you know, cross the line, you know, disrespect that. But of course, you know what I mean? I'll help you out. Mm -hmm. It never came to fruition. And uh, one day I came to the gym. And he was there with his little brother. His little brother's my very, very respectful, great kid. Yep. So like all the negative things that his older brother went through, the younger brother seemed to learn not to go down that road. Quality kid. The older brother, this little brother that there at the gym, came to see me, just, had just came home. He looked good. Completely different individual. Wow. Sure. We had a long conversation, right? I know I'm taking forever to tell the story. So I'm impressed with him. I say, hey, it's our show. <laughs> I said, you know, it seems like you really learned, you know, like you, you grew. He said, I did, you know, I grew a lot. I learned a lot of my mistakes, you know. I, you know, he had a young lady that stood by him the whole time. She's doing right, very well. So I'm like, you, you got a second shot, you know, don't fuck it up. So he's telling me, he's like, I feel like people want me to, to fail. Like, you know, people are like, you know, they're not, yep. they're not really true. Like, uh, it seems like, you know, his old environment, people want him to get in a negative, you know, like, it just seems like they're waiting for him to fail. I said, I'll tell you something. There's not one person that wants you to be successful. Not one. Don't even look in that direction. They all want you to fail. They all want to be right. Yeah, this kid is going to be just the way we said he's going to turn out to be. They want you to be a failure. They, right. They're waiting for you to fuck up again. Yeah. I said, it's up to you, but it don't matter what they think or how they feel about you. You know the fucking truth. Now, you got to do what you need to do to make sure that you're successful this time. And if you don't, it's on you, and it's up to you. Fuck what they think. Yeah, I'm going to tell you right now, nobody wants you to be fucking successful. None of them. Everybody wants you to fall in. They want you to go back to selling drugs, doing anything negative, and end up right back up in prison. That's what they're all saying. Even the, the, the nicest people in the world say, oh, he's never going to amount to anything. Yeah, some of them they want to be right. They don't want to be wrong. And the thing is, it's up to you to change that narrative. It's up to you to make a difference. It's up to you to prove them wrong. And it's not about proving them wrong. It's about having a life. And, and learning from your mis past mistakes and moving forward. And if you do that, you'll be fine. But don't don't try to get into impressing them or living up to your right. past. Just Take your like new direction and mind your business. Don't even let them know what you're up to. Just keep chipping away at what you're trying to do. Be humble. The next thing you know, they'll be looking back like, oh my God. And it's nothing for you to come and show them. You just keep going on with your life. And that's what it is.
that's why I want it to happen so much because like you and I know there's people out there and they're already betting against them you know he did time he did this he did that fuck them because I'm gonna they don't know skis skis I'm one fucking tenacious son of a bitch and I'm gonna help that kid and I really want to that's why I'm asking you and a little, you know, sometime to help him because yeah, he's gonna yeah. go to, he's trying to get something for a scholarship. He, he's proved himself, he's done very well up to now after all the stuff he took. And uh, and the first thing was when I said, he went and helped one of those other kids who said, this guy really has helped me the past year and yeah. tried to make me better. So he's done the right thing all the way along. I'll be damned, I'm gonna help him too. Hey, we're obligated to do that and that's what, that's what we're here for. You know, if we're not doing that, then we ain't shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's they're young people. They don't have the wisdom that we have. They've experienced. They make mistakes. They're not. They don't. No, they're not going to do everything right. No child is. No young person ever is. Even the, 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 the nicest, sweetest kids, the kids that go on and are very successful in life, they still make mistakes. Some just make some that are more detrimental than others. But everybody has a chance for redemption. Everybody, sh you know. If they are true to themselves and wake up from what they do, they, they have the right to be able to change their life, change the narrative, you know, reconstruct who they are and move forward in a positive manner. You know, when I look at this kid, I mean, you know, he was, I just saw in his eyes that, you know, he just, he was, he was ashamed when he did and he wanted to change. So I just really, I hope, you know, I really hope to God that that, and the thing is, like, sometimes we guess wrong or sometimes people aren't able to change fully or they'll result back, and that is what it is. But well, the first step is he's supposed to come to the gym today. So that's why I'm going to go back to him and make sure I'm with him. And that's all you can do, you know what I mean? How many times have you seen me introduce these kids to my cousin or nephew or whatever? So he's going to be a nephew or a cousin because everybody treats him a little bit better. Right. So, I guess why you know I always refer to the young ladies that come into my establishment, or that I ever train or do what I would say. This is my daughter. People are like my daughter. And sometimes my wife gets mad because people really oh, think that my daughter. I know, you know, I know. Like I have outside, you know. And I never had kids outside of my, you know. Oh, but but I dude. always I always address them that way so that the dynamic, the guys are around in the gym like. Eh. Is that, right. is that really his daughter? You know, they're going to treat him with a certain respect. You know, I, I don't want... You can... You can that's the one thing I, I, I had no tolerance for. You're never, ever going to disrespect anybody in my establishment. You understand? Know, because that's me, casa, su casa. I extend myself to you. You don't cross the line. You never disrespect anybody's wife, um, daughter, kids. I'm not having hey. that. Then we get the other side of it. You know? Let's take the camera. We're gonna take the camera into your gym sometime. Yeah. Because it really is impressive. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it bring it in. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, this is just a cool environment. I love eating it with Norris and chopping it up with him. You know, and uh, you know, my environment is kind of harsh. His environment is kind of harsh, but it is what it is. And we will do a, a couple of cast podcasts out of it. But yeah, you know, we will. You get me excited about doing that kind of stuff. I wish they talked to me more than Arnold, though. <laughs> I'm going to try and make it, but no, it no, depends no, on how the pro it, days go. No, it's no, I, I, yeah. that's something that we need to do, that I need to do. But I'm going to say, because you're, like, uh, you're kind of like my right-hand man that I really believe we end up doing some stuff together. And uh, if I can that's help the you out. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, that's the hub. That's the, that's the launching pad. That's the... You know, that's for everybody. Holy man, that's why he's in there. Just so, this is so good to me, it's crazy. You want to you know? I remember the, a few years back, you told me to come to the animal cage and rock and roll and, you know, don't worry about nothing, you know. Well, the whole thing is, you know. I'm, um, they have the uh, National Animal Day there, which is really big and it's really, you get to meet so many different people from our community. It would, and you're the right person to meet and, 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 and show to so many different people. Uh, they would really love you. Yeah, I'm coming out because of your, back, you your, your place, I mean, like, what you've done with athletics. My dear friends, I mean, he really, 
he has it down with all the athletes he's worked with. He really, really done well. So, thanks. I try. <laughs> we try. You know, I mean, my, my whole emphasis as my wife, you know, I, I've done a lot with different athletes. But, you know, I'm a powerlifting coach. My deal is I, I can take anybody and just make them stronger. I really can. But that's the key. I mean, and then making a the transition. You know, you make them strong and powerful. And then, you know, skill transfer. You know? Uh, it's how to bridge the gap. You know what I mean? How to apply all of that and make it work for you. And then, you know, what direction you want to go. And the same with life, you know what I mean? Stay-at-home mom, or working mom, or working dad. You know, you get all of this, you train a certain way, and how do you apply that to your everyday life? You know, how does that make you a better individual? You know what I mean? Overcoming adversity, you know, never giving up, you know, working to your true potential, maximizing your true potential. You know what I mean? How do you, um, and you've, I mean, gotten, I love Hodge. Andre, right? And, uh, I mean, overall, I mean, they, even as up with body service, you know, for a drug free athlete and no gear and everything else. And the way you've done it in different things, that's why I want to, I like watching you when you train and get, you know, do that kind of stuff. Right? But it's a, you know, take it, the, 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 the talk about a weed of principle. One of the things that I like to apply is instinctive training. And I took it from bodybuilding. And it was a, and it's kind of like a, CrossFitters do it to a certain degree too. But I've been doing that before them, but <laughs> like bastards. But please, as no. a, a corporation, Cut not the people. Out. But um, you know, uh, that was a weeder principle, and um, I heard Arnold talk about it one time years ago. I well read about him talking about it, and it, uh, and it was something that uh, stuck with me. And I applied it to my training. Of course, my own little twist to it. There's a way to apply it where, you know, you know the thing about training certain ways. You know, you, you know, and this is what you know, uh, uh, to show was you know progress. You need that. You know what I mean. And you need to have a blueprint to work toward something and know how to fine tune it and fix it along the way. Right. And, uh, you know, periodization, different forms of, you know, uh, 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 training over the years. But with instinctive training, it puts a lot on the coach because with every individual athlete, you have to be able to, to devise a plan, be instinctive with it, but take in their, uh, all their variables of that individual athlete. Right. So, um, and you know, each knowing each athlete is unique and able to fine tune that per athlete. It's like a lot of stuff that people do, like so, um, a windler five by five or certain things that people apply, different modalities, they apply pretty much across the board and they are, uh, they do work. But when you're dealing with certain athletes, when it, that's their profession, you have to take it a step further. So with the instinctive style of training that I do, you have to be instinctive to each individual, their pros and cons, their strengths and weaknesses, and be able to formulate a formula that's going to be successful. And it's trial and error, and, it, and it's guinea pig. You know what I mean? There's certain things that you have to be able to, but it's per athlete, and that's the tedious part of it. But I've been very successful with it because a Vinnie Curry is not a uh, 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 Muhammad Sanu. Um, you know, uh, 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 Andre Hodge is not a, a Rajon Howard. You know what I mean? They have things that are similar, but things that are very, you know, very different. So when you train them, I and even when you train them collectively as a group, you have to be able to fine tune them certain ways. And that, I think, is my gift. You know, to be able to maximize, see what their strength and the weaknesses are, and able to fine tune it on the fly, doing a workout and learning and being able to retain that. Not, I don't write the data down. Right. You know, it's all up here. Maybe that's how I safeguard what I do, but I keep it all in here. You know, every even with the, the moms that train in the morning, I know everything about all of them, and it's all up in here. 
and like you know I'll find you or tweak a, a workout and I ask them how they're feeling and go through the motor recruitment and, 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 and the dynamic warm up and I figure certain things and I ask them certain questions and then I know how like so is Le- if, if, if uh, Elisa's shoulder is bad and, and Linda's knee is not good I'll adapt the whole workout you know what I mean right. so they're all getting the bang for the buck but I'm not over the overuse issues and certain right. things and make sure they can get up and go to work. Right. You know what I mean? So well, that's part of it, too. Yeah. You know, they're not professional athletes, so you have to, you know, fine tune in a certain way. That's why I mean, like, you know, a lot of times when I do start an athlete, and, uh, you know, I specifically start it so that I know I'm not going to crush him the next day. I mean, I know some trainers, they, they get a kick out of, like, almost making it so the person, like, is ungodly sore the next day to, to prove a point. They think. Because, it doesn't prove anything. No, it really because doesn't. society has told them, oh, I've been so sore, so that workout worked. It's not right. that it's working, it's just, you know, it's, <laughs> and, and, you know, it's just high volume or high rep. If you high volume or high rep anything, or especially high rep, then you're going to right. produce muscle soreness. Right. We know the tricks of the trade to, to if we wanted to reel somebody in or, or, uh, or misrepresent what we do. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah, you want to get somebody a good workout, but when you're training an athlete, right. it's different from training a person that's, you know, just coming in to burn some calories, get more healthy, and be fit. That's different. You can approach it a little different. But when that's their professional, they're an athlete in school, you know, their uh, scholarship is dependent upon it, you know, the professional athlete, their, you know, the livelihood is dependent upon it. You have to take uh, uh, that into you know, consideration, and you have to be, you know, you have to be on point with it. You know, you can't just, uh, you know, bring them in and, and, and work them out and, and, and kill them and think that that's being progressive or being, you know, helpful. You know, sometimes, you know, guys are like, you know, I, I don't think I did enough. I'm like, you did too much. You know, you have to recover from the last workout. You know what I mean? See, that's why it's so, it's so crucial when I talk about, you know, I really love the West Side way. You know, Louie out there, man. You got it down to a science. He's the man. Where uh, the man. you talk about, I mean, we, we limit, he trains fast and furious. You get a lot done in a workout, and it's limited to, you know, a certain time, because over a certain time, we know our testosterone drops, and the effect of the workout drops the nil. So what are you going to do? Are you going to burn yourself out? No. You make your, your, your workout more effective, fast and furious. You get the workout in and out and done. Do some restorative type training. Because if you're not doing that other second step, the restorative type training, whether showers or massage or whatever, you're not getting the full benefit out of your training. Yeah. And that's something, you know, Don and I talk about, and, and uh, I, I, this is like a little segue to it, I want to purposely put it in here, is that uh, uh, in town, a brand new flotation tank place opened up. And uh, I intend to take a trip down there, take a video.